Good afternoon. You know, I travel across the country. I speak to people in places like NASA, the FBI, the Pentagon, who uses our products on the war in Iraq and is made by our own hometown people. I travel to big corporations like Time Warner, Comcast, Cablevision. I speak to schools and universities across the country like the Naval Academy, the Military Academy, speaking to professors, teachers, and coaches. But today, I speak to my most important audience, my family, my friends, and my hometown people. It gives me great honor to have been chosen to speak to you on such an important topic in such an important time in our American history. Several years ago, there was a study done on what drives people. What drives people? What ideals drive people? And in that study, they found three things that people live for. They strive their entire life for, and they will even die for it. One is freedom. Freedom. Freedom to believe how we want. Freedom to say what we want and freedom to become what we want and to have our children become what they want. It's the American dream. The second principle was peace. Peace in our world. Peace in our homes. And peace in our companies. Because work is a big part of our life. Peace from harassment. Peace from the bullies that tend to take the passion out of our employees. And peace from mediocrity. The third thing that they discovered, the third ideal that people will live and die for is love. Love of our country. Our great country means so much, but you'd never realize it watching the media. It's the country that makes dreams. The love of our country is in, in our genes. We were born with them in America. And the love of our family and our friends we're the most passionate society in the world. We not only love our own children, we extend that love to our families and our friends and to our communities and to our world. We are the most passionate and charitable country in the world. And then there's the love of who we are and what we do. These are the things that American dreams are made of. This is why we came to America, at least my grandfather did in the late, uh, the early 1900s. He came here when he was 16 years old. Can you imagine? Now, when he told me this story when I was a young child, I didn't think too much of it until later in life. And then it hit me. He was 16 years old. Ladies and gentlemen, just imagine for a second sending your 16-year-old child away, away maybe to never see them again, away to this thing called American dream. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine how much love a mother or father must have to send their child away so they can have a better life, a better life in this country called America? Can you imagine the character, the principles that this country must have had to the world for someone to send their children away to be parented by America. We don't get to where we do by ourselves. All of us sitting in this room eating at the Duquesne Club. Well, you know, we didn't get here. I didn't get to stand here by myself today to talk with you. I didn't get the wisdom I did all alone. Many people came before us. A grandfather, a mom and dad who worked hard so we could have a better life. A mentor, a teacher who said just the right words who unlocked the secrets that allowed us to become better. And the wife and the spouse 
who says the encouraging words and gives the loving support so that we can keep on keeping on. No, we don't get here alone. The American dream is done by lots of people with character and principles that we can only imagine. Our forefathers who created our constitution that we live by today had great character, great principles they were driven by. Today our society has changed. We are driven more by personality than we are character. And it began to change after World War II, the personality society where if it feels good, do it. How to win friends and influence people, how to have a positive mental attitude is the priority in our America today. But I suggest that that should not be the priority. You know, it's important to have a great personality. But if you don't know the right things to do, and you're trying to get to New York City, and you don't have the right map, you're going to be the most positive person in the world going in the wrong direction. I suggest that principles come first. Principles like honesty. Principles like integrity. Principles like industry, working hard. How many in here would love their, love their children to grow up with a great personality but be dishonest? I have never talked to anyone in my life that they want their child to grow up and be dishonest, not a hard worker, have no integrity. I don't know anyone. And I bet you if we go to anywhere else in the world, we won't have anybody that wants their child to grow up like that. Because those are the principles that are universal. They mean the same to me as they do to you. Those principles of honesty and integrity and the most important love means the same here in the United States, here in Pittsburgh, or in Russia. I'm sure the people in Russia loved those children that were caught in that terrorism. I'm sure that those parents, their hearts will be painful for the rest of their lives, just like our hearts would be broken if that happened to a Pittsburgh school. We are so similar in this world if we look at the top with the principles. It's the North Star. They mean the same everywhere. I'll give you an example of what I mean by a principle that maybe we can understand a little better. Science seems to be objective. The principle of gravity. Gravity is a universal principle of science. Those kinds of principles can affect your life rather quickly. If you're ignorant of the fact that gravity exists, it still will affect your life. If you're ignorant that it doesn't exist and you don't know the rules of gravity, it will affect your life. Example, if you drive off Mount Washington, you are going down, whether you understand the rules of gravity or not. And it will affect your life very quickly. Now, honesty, however, is not so drastic. If I'm dishonest just today, tomorrow I probably won't feel too much different. I'll probably feel somewhat similar as I did today. But the next day I do it, and I do it for years, I become a different person. And the most tragic thing about becoming a different person with a great personality and no principles is that you affect the lives of a whole lot of other people. And that is the tragedy. I remember I'm standing in front of you as proud as I can be because my story goes back years ago to a place I lived in 35 miles from here, a place near Greensburg. The town had no name. It had a few nicknames. One was Billy Goat Hill, and it was named because my grandfather, who came to this country, to have a better way of life, raising sheep. Can you imagine that? Raising sheep with 14 kids. Sheep and, uh, and goats. That's why they called it Billy Goat Hill. I lived in that town with no name, on a street that had no name, in a house that had no number. You might say, I came from nowhere. <laughs> I lived in a two-bedroom home, and my family was nine. My father, we had no indoor plumbing, and my father was unemployed three to five months a year. 
Because at that time, this was in the 60s, our area was going through a transition. Does that sound familiar? The trans a, a transition from making coal and coke to another industry. They were leaving. The jobs were leaving. So my father made two or three thousand dollars a year raising a family of nine people. We don't get to where we are today alone. Somebody paid a price for us to get just a little bit more. And that makes me proud to be an American. When I think of my grandfather, and I think of my mom and dad, they don't enjoy the life I do now because they paid a better price to get us here. And so I thought, how could I leave you with a message that summarizes the things I'm trying to tell you? Because I could talk for hours on this, but how can I leave you a two or three minute message that would encapsulate what we're talking about here today. And I can go back to what Abraham Lincoln said years ago. And Abraham Lincoln was the very unpopular president of time, at the time. But today he's the most endeared president who we ever had. And he said that the character of a person is not revealed when the times are tough. War. Stock market crashing losing your job. No, that's not the true character of a person. The really true character of a person is revealed when you give them power and control over someone else. Power and control over someone else's life. It's tragic when you are guided by someone with no principles. It's tragic. I think if I had my child graduating from college to get this great new opportunity and he works for someone who has no principles, my heart would break. We must realize that we have a great opportunity in America. We owe it to those people who come before us, who made this American dream possible. You know, how many in here has ever heard of American dream stories? You see them on TV, you see them in the movies. There's thousands of stories, and I'm sure you have one of your grandfather or your grandmother. But when is the last time you saw a movie or you heard a story about someone's dream to go to Poland or Russia or Iraq. No, it's the American dream that you hear the stories about. And you would never realize that today if you hear, listen to the news. The stories are in this room. They're being made every day by people who care about having a priority of principles. Principles should guide us. It's the North Star. They don't change. If you're ignorant of the fact of principles, it will still affect your life, positively or negatively, if you understand the rules. And so today I ask you, we're, 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 we have a group of companies in here and employees who work for these companies. I ask you this, what is a company? I suggest to you to contemplate that. What is this company? To me, I, you know, I hear things like, <coughs> the company. You ever hear that? The company. And its managers and its leaders as they or them. As if the company were somewhat inhuman. But you know, the company is human. It's made up of you. It's made up of you. It's made up of you. It's made up of me. We make the company everything. If a company has great integrity, it's because we as individuals have great integrity and we apply it to our workplace. If we are honest, or if our company is known to be honest, it's because we as individuals are honest first. And if we are good at serving our customer, it's because we as individuals are good at serving others, not only at work, in our community, and in our homes. We make the company everything. It's not the company. We are the company. And then I thought, what is this company? It's run by people. CEOs and managers and vice presidents and employees. But what is a good employee? What is a good leader? And to me, I suggest that a good leader is first a person who is good to people. But before you can be good to people, you have to be good with people. To be good with people, you must 
understand them. And to understand them, you have to understand yourself first. Before you can understand yourself, you have to know two rules. Very simple rules. One, there's another principle that probably guides us all. And I would suggest that we're so similar in this room, all of you would agree with me. That one rule is there's probably a great chance that there's someone higher than us who have created us that we will report to someday. I call it the spiritual CEO. And two is the second rule. It's the most important, I think. And you understand all ethics when you understand this rule. It's called the golden rule. Do unto others what you'd have others do unto you. It sounds simple. President Kennedy, in 1963, was giving an anti-segregation speech at the University of Alabama. And the reason was because the first black person was enrolled at the school in this history. And he was speaking to thousands of people, and he said to them, imagine, ladies and gentlemen, if you were black. Imagine, ladies and gentlemen, if you couldn't vote. Imagine if you couldn't go into a restaurant that you wanted to and drink at a public fountain that you wanted to or sit at the front of a bus. Imagine. Do unto others what you would have others do unto you. Imagine if you thought that way and I thought that way, both at the same time. Imagine if you thought that way and your company thought that way, both at the same time while coming to work every day. Imagine if your company thought that way, its vendors and its suppliers thought that way, all while doing business together in our world, in the American dream world. Imagine the effect we would have on ourself, on the company, and the lives in our community. We are the CEOs, the managers, the vice presidents, the line coordinators, the bosses, the owners, we owe it to those people who have come before us to run our companies with dignity, to set good examples of great principles like honesty and frugality and being industrious. They look at us as the mentor. We owe it to create environments where people will love coming to work because work is the most important thing to an American. It allows us to put our kids through school, to buy that new car, to get that new mortgage, to do things that no other country dreams of. And we owe it to those people to take pride, but to also fight the war. People have died for our right to have freedom, peace, and love. We can fight the war. I pledged that I would fight the war when I was spared going to Vietnam. Now, I could fight the war in a simpler way. Fight the war on poverty of the mind, mediocrity and apathy in the workplace, the bullies that will take the passion out of great kids coming out of the school and starting their career. We make the company everything. And so when we get to the end of our career someday, or we get to the end of our life, Maybe our spiritual CEO will say, great job, my good and faithful servant. It's been a pleasure to be here with you today. It is a pleasure to be sharing ideas that I have with you today. And it will be a great pleasure if I get to speak to you on another day.